Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I found myself modeling this railroad hand car the other day, and in order to uh, accurately reflect this model, I had to create all of these individual pieces and apply them to the model. And with that level of detail, it is important to maintain that throughout the whole model, including the wheels. Now, in order to maintain a high level of detail, the polygon count of the wheels has to be very high. But it is often going to be so high that it's impractical when you consider the polygon count for the overall model. Well, today's tutorial, um, I'm going to create one of these wheels, but I'm going to do so at uh, with with the objective of keeping the polygon count low. Now, something that absolutely has to um, be maintained in the object is the nice round smooth wheels. You can go low polygon count but then you'll end up with these angular clunky looking Flintstone wheels and that it would just destroy the overall uh, integrity of the model. It would just it would just pull away from uh, the rest of the detail that was placed into it. Uh, also with these holes that are cut out here if you don't have a high polygon count, then these rounded uh, ends would be angular. And again, that would really detract away from the beauty of this model. And I'm going to show you how you can create a object like these wheels that look like they have a really high polygon count, but are surprisingly low all things considered. So let's hop on into hexagon. Now the first thing I need to do is create a cylinder. So I'm just going to drag a cylinder down in here. And uh, I'm just going to collapse my dynamic geometry. Actually let me delete that because it's not giving me the options that I want. There we are. I'm just going to keep the points at 8, the sections at 0, and I will close everything there. Let me place this in the center of my 3D world. There we are. Okie dokie. I want to... Actually, I want to rotate it that way. All right. First thing I need to do is I need to create the lip. So I'm going to move that polygon in. Come over here to Vertex Modeling, Sweep Surface, and bring it to about there, and bring that to about there, bring that there. Uh, bring that into there, bring that into there. Now this is like the little hub here in the middle. Okay, maybe that could come out a little bit further. And I think it's a little bit too deep, so there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to spin this around, delete this polygon on the back. I don't need that. All that will do is distort the, uh, the back of it when I go to apply some smoothing to it. All right, at its current state, it looks pretty, uh, well, it looks like it came off of a Flintstone handcart. Let me go ahead and save this right now. And we'll apply some smoothing to this, and it's looking a little bit better, a little bit better. But, you know, a lot of the detail uh, has been lost because um, up here, 
Let me go to this image here. These need to be fairly crisp edges. Here, 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 and along this hub here, along here, and uh, at the at the end here. And with the level of subdivision that we currently have, we we we've lost a lot of that detail. So I'm going to add a few uh, tessellations in here and just tighten things up a little bit. First thing I want to do is I want to add one. I'm going to add two of them close to this line and you'll see how it'll start tightening up. I'm going to add two of them right here. And look at that. It tightened it up fairly well. I'm going to add one there. I'm going to add one there. Whoopsie, it didn't like that. Let me try this again. Right there. Right there. Right there. Now I'm going to validate that. Now if I have to undo it, it won't do it won't do un it won't undo all that I had previously done. So I'll use the tessellation by slice again and let's add one there. Add one there. Still got to put one right in there. All right. Now this little hub up here, we need to add a few more there. The nice thing about adding these subdivisions while it has a level of smoothing applied to it is you can see, you get immediate feedback uh, and visual results of what it is that you're doing. Let me see, do I want one? I think I want one there. And there, there you go. Look at that. Let me click off of it. You got a, uh, a nice crisper edge. And let's grab the tessellation by slice tool again. And I need to be, I need to enable my dynamic geometry because I need to be on this thing right there the control and one there and one there validate that come over to select faces select that one I'm gonna delete it okay so well we've only added a few little lines of of tessellation but immediately much greater uh, visual results well I'm going to bring the smoothing level down to one and I'm going to commit that level of dynamic geometry because that gives me a whole bunch more uh, polygons to play with. I'm going to select every other group of these because this is going to be the holes that are going to be in the the wheel here. With those selected I'm going to hit delete now when I apply, uh, we'll apply one level of subdivision and that's not enough because you see the the angular look here if I apply two there we go now that's that's looking much better still a little cleanup work uh, that needs to be done to sharpen up that edge and certainly sharpen up this edge a little bit more but that's looking pretty good However, watch what happens to our polygon count when we commit to this level of dynamic smoothing, dynamic geometry. We've got nearly 10,000 polygons. The wheel looks good, pretty good anyway, but this number of polygons is really prohibitively high. But if you go with just one level of smoothing, all right, 2,400, but you still got that, you still have these flat spots, these, this angular look to it. Well, that's not going to work. What about one more level of smoothing? Well, there we are, back up, nearly 10,000 polygons. Well, that's the look I like. 
but what I don't like are the number of polygons. So I'm going to show you how we can fix this whole problem. We can create that smooth, nice, rounded look and achieve a quality look to this wheel, but we're going to reduce, significantly reduce, the number of polygons on this wheel. Let me take this, and I'll just move it off to the side. Now I'm going to deviate from what I was doing here, and I'm going to introduce a tool that maybe some of you might not be familiar with, or maybe some of you are, or maybe some of you have never even seen it. I'm going to create a plane here, 20 by 20 cells, and uh, I'll just make it completely square, 33 by 33. Let me hide my wheel. Okay, this plane has a total of 400 polygons in it, and if I click off of it, you would never know that it has 400 polygons in it. It looks like just one large size polygon. Only once you see its level of subdivision do you realize, wow, look at all those cubes. But to achieve this look, you do not need 400 polygons. All you need is one polygon. It looks no different whether this was divided up into 10 polygons or a million polygons. So the level of subdivision on this object here is far too high to achieve the very simple look that, that we have to it. So I'm going to show you how you can remove the unnecessary and unwanted polygons very simply reduce the level of tessellation and still maintain the quality look that you need for that given object. Uh, I'm going to come up here to select edges. Eh, well, no, we'll keep it right where it is right now. I'm going to come over here to utilities tab and this tool right here I'm going to click and hold down. I'm going to come down to this bottom tool here which says merge coplanar facets and it merges all the facets perfectly coplanar to, co to create a single facet. Essentially what that means is all of these polygons that are sharing the same plane, not the same physical location in 3D space, but that are all on the same plane, it will merge them all together. So here is my object. Come down here click on the merge coplanar and now look at my polygon count it's one and it looks no different than it did when it was divided up into 400 let me control Z and undo that a little bit okay we're back to 400 I'm gonna come up here to select edges and I will select those edges whoops I got the wrong one there we are more vertex modeling, tessellation, and I'm going to create a, well, I'll create several tessellations right in here. Okay, now I've got 460 polygons. If I spin around and look at it from the side, I only have three planes on this object. I have a plane going that direction, plane going that direction, and a plane coming straight down. So for those three planes, it is divided up into 460 polygons. That is unnecessary. Come back to the Utilities tab, click on Coplanar, Merge Coplanar Facets, and watch what happens. Let me rotate it up a little bit. Now my polygon count is back down to three. And what it did is all of the polygons on this plane here, on that one selected, it merged it into one. Same for here, and same for here. And the look is no different, whether it was 460 or 4060. It looks exactly the same. So this is the process that we're going to utilize in lowering the polygon count 
of this monstrosity of a uh, of of a uh, of a wheel. So let me get rid of my plane here that I created. Don't need that anymore. Let's come back to our wheel. We're coming up into 15 minutes on this tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end this tutorial here, and I will start up a second one where we're going to start working on our wheel and giving it the quality look that I've got in this image here but with a significantly reduced polygon count. So that's it for this first tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.